there we go hey what's going on guys um i was trying to um have everything set up before um the sh you know i went live but um there was an issue going on with uh my what is this uh stream labs so just give me a second to do my sound check i don't know if you guys were able to pick up on that or not so um let me just get in here and do that and we'll be back to um where we were yesterday and then we'll do some more stuff because um initially i was going to hold off on doing file uploads until a little bit later because um i wasn't familiar with the process and um you know i know this is going to be kind of like a learning live kind of thing but uh, it just had a lot of unknowns associated with it so i was going to put it off but uh it's a, it's a crucial part of what i need so I don't want to get so caught up in doing the front end and then have to dive back into the back end when this is something that I can set up from the beginning. So, um, actually, I still haven't gotten around to that sound check. Um, I don't know what's going on. It's, it's taking a second for it to show up live. Oh, here it is. All right, let me check this. Uh, I just want to make sure my sound's good. So I'm actually going to mute my mic. All right, we're good. I just did my sound check and everything is looking good, sounding good. Um, when I'm looking at the stream, it looks a little blurry, but um, that's okay. So here we go. Um, before we dig into anything else, um, I wanna go back over into these models and I just wanna verify that I'm not uh, missing anything crucial. Um, when I look at, when I think about my user, um, I'm thinking about all of the data that I need to, for me. Um, I think this this is definitely enough information here so uh, I think that part's fine um, and then the only thing that I'll really need later is when I log in I'll have to pass that um, to my front end so that'll be um, something I have to play around with on the front end so um, probably this weekend I'll start looking into that to figure out what's going on um, in terms of when everything when I make my calls and how I do my authentication because um, I know that's going to be really important for managing um, my site. Um, the next thing I need to do is I actually need to create a, another user, um, well, another type of user, because um, I'm creating a um, subscriber um, base. So I want to have my subscribers in here. So if I, when I create my new post and all of that stuff, I want to um, have that model. Uh, and be able to send them um, information to say, hey, I created a new post, or hey, I started a new project. Um, so this is something that'll be really good for sending emails and stuff like that. And um, I'll do some research over the weekend and dig into how I can send those emails um, inside of you know my post and my um, project routers. But I don't think I'll have time to even start looking at that today. So um, that's fine. And uh, I'm gonna do one thing over here is open up my stream dashboard so that I can see it. Um, so that way if anybody has a question or um, wants to say anything, I can see it in the chat. Um, just, and if you are here, uh, just take a second to drop me a line so I can just see how this thing works because to this day I still have no idea how it works. Um, so what I was actually trying to do is open up Adobe XD, but um, in previous streams it just hasn't been very friendly to me. Um, so I didn't want to start with that on the screen, um, but here it is now. Any minute now. All right, so um, this is taking a while, so I'm just going to move this over to another screen, and I can continue working with our subscriber. So um, the same as usual, we're going to go in here to const uh, mongoose, and then we can go um, equals and um, we're going to import mongoose. Um, I could have done this the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I could have done this probably a different way. No, well, I'm sorry, I'm kind of thinking in two places. Um, but yeah, I could have used that imports thing. I'm kind of just thinking about that. And to say, I really don't know which one is better. I've always done it this way, so it makes more sense. When I think of doing it the other way, I think Python. Um, I don't know which more is like considered to be a modernized version of that 
so um, that's that uh, I think I looked at this before but we can do it again and let's just say import first require node JS so yeah I did look at that before um, back in 2017 actually um, so I think it's just all a matter of, so yeah this is the ES6 stuff um, so this is common JS. So okay, apart from that, you can't so you need with require. Oh, huh, okay. So you can save memory. Only get the pieces you need. Um, loading is synchronous step for require. On the other hand, import can be asynchronous. Hmm. Okay. So it's some performance trade off there. Um, so maybe I will go back and clean up stuff to say that and let's see how this works. So let's, let's go insert import um, mongoose from mongoose hmm, That's interesting. Oh, I didn't mean to hit that so um, Oh, so do we have to put it? I don't think we have to put in the parentheses like that Let's include the typing definition of the first form that makes sense in this case in the second form of the variable expression should be of type any you put in here the definitions um okay i'm not going to do that um actually let me there is a documentation here i wanted to see um so this just helps us with um seeing how everything's wired up and oh actually my um website is actually ready to go yeah i'm not using that i don't want to make this uh more tedious more I don't want to add more steps to to this process so I'm just gonna leave it back to where it was <coughs> and um, the website is well the design is loading up um, now it's ready okay so um, again there's this so far we've got our um, we've got our blog we got a um, post set up there so we have the blog posts um, so that'll be ready to go I think as is but um, again, we're going to work with that image because um, I was going to do an S3 bucket, but um, it seems that I can just get it in here using the buffer on Mongoose. So um, I'll dig into that a little later. Um, we've got the subscribe button. And this is how people will be able to subscribe and uh, we'll need to capture that email address. And um, so this is what's going to help me with my with my model, um, looking at the information that the users are adding because what's going to happen is the user is going to give their email and they'll subscribe um, but usually when you subscribe you're going to need some kind of email confirmation so what I'll have to do is I'll have to go a little deeper and I will have to add on that emailing um, aspect of things along with this so that'll be something I'll probably do on Monday so um, I'll do my research on that over the weekend the reason being because I haven't done any research on what will be a good API to use for that um, so I don't, you know, it can take hours um, doing that. So I don't want to waste time streaming doing that. Um, this stuff will be statically done because if I need to update it, I think it'll just be easier to go in and update it. Um, this stuff is pretty straightforward. Um, over here we have um, the projects, and this is kind of the model that we've already created. Um, with these, this will also be a good way to use that buffer because, um, you know, I don't if you have the buffer it's it's it'd be more performant in my opinion and for this stuff I don't really need these images to be um, a part of my what's the word I'm looking for my SEO which is like search engine optimization I don't need that stuff to be optimized and I don't think uh, and so if, you know I don't need that to be a part of what I'm doing so I'm okay with that and the same thing kind of with my with my post images um, that will help I think when it, when it comes to search engine optimization but um, I've actually been looking into a better way to do that with Angular, so that way this stuff is available. Um, however, when it's in that um, encrypted format or that buffer format that you'll see in a second, um, I don't know how that, you know, goes with um, search engine optimization. But again, this is just the MVP. If I do need to optimize later on, I can always work that in and just modify what I already have, even if that means pulling it out completely and changing it. Um, that's perfectly fine. At least uh, it's it's not great. It's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is to you know have it one way and, and it's just done. 
but um, you know, I don't have that luxury. Um, there's also kind of, uh, so I'm not sure how this Facebook API works, so um, I'll just work with that once I have it on the front end, and then I'll work backwards that way, because this one will at least make a little sense for me. And then we have this form here. So with this, um, I'm actually not sure how I want to handle this because what I could do is I could have this also dig into that email API that I'll be using, and this will just send me a direct email um, because I'm, I'm I don't want I don't know if I want to have like a dashboard you know at some point where I can just go in and see all the contacts and have all that stuff managed in one place. So um, yeah, so I think we have enough there. And then when we look down at our um, login, you know, we have that set up. I might want to add a forget password um, endpoint so that if I get my password, I can reset it. But for that, I will definitely need definitely need my um, um, email interface. So um, I'll hold off on that. And then um, even over here with the post, we have the title. We have all this stuff here. And then with the um, project, um, I might have to figure out how we're going to do this with um, there's an the API I'm using to get this in here. So when I actually go down to having my um, my project, I may have to modify some things. And then when we look over here at our um, category, all that stuff, this stuff seems to be fine. Um, so that's all good. And then um, another thing we'll do is I'm thinking about when I make my post live, that might be something I'm looking for. Um, but actually, um, while I was um, doing some research, I see that Mongoose actually has a timestamps thing. And um, I don't know if that's going to be relevant to what I'm trying to do because the way I'm doing it now works for me for my specific use case because now I can actually toggle some stuff. Um, but they have a timestamps. So let's look at that. And all it does is kind of the same thing. It, it shows the last updated all that kind of stuff which um, in my opinion I don't think I need that so um, here we'll get to say um, the timestamps option tells Mongo to assign created at and updated at field to your schema the type assigned is date by default the names of the fields are created at and so we can also we can customize them customize them but I don't need to so um, I think we're good there. I don't think we we need this. Um, so that's that's fine. Um, excuse me. Yes, yeah, so I'm not even going to use that. So let's go back to our code, and um, let's go go ahead with our subscriber. So with our subscriber, we're also going to do the thing with um. And so when I created the subscriber thing, the only thing I did was give them. A way to say hey um, I'm a subscriber and hmm actually I might just use um, my user platform for that um, reason being because um, they may have to sign in let's say they want to opt out of some stuff um, I'll need a way to sort through that stuff so that's why this is again that's why I said um, it's better to have it and not need it than needing to not have it because now what I can do is I can go through this thing and I can sort through all of my users that aren't administrators and hey I might even want to send it to myself so that way I know it works so you know this is this is fine actually I don't even need to create another um, another um, mo um, model so I'm just gonna go ahead and whack that and um, get back to where we were so okay user looks good post is where we're going to have to change this because we're going to change the way we're doing our images so that's fine um, we have the status we are doing all the validation stuff um, and I don't see anything in here that needs to be removed or hidden or anything like that I don't see any kind of information that needs to be hidden because this is all going to be publicly publicly displayed anyway um, same thing here. I don't see anything um, that needs to be changed here. Um, the only thing I know that'll be important. Uh, well, actually, these schemas here actually bother me. Um, I don't know why I had them set up like that. 
So um, let me actually fix these. And I'll start with the top. So um, each section, right, has a title and it has the content. And then down here we had images. So I'm actually just gonna copy everything that I put in here for um, for the image. And um, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna grab that and you'll see how I'm gonna work this in a second. So then each image object. So now we're gonna, so now we have our um, images here and then we're gonna make this an object. So we're gonna say, okay, this is an array of a image object. And this object has that. And um, I really wanna say that the image object has, um, if I can think, I wanna say that this has, I wanna, I'm trying to set this up to say, you have that, oh yeah, and you just do title. So we should be able to go in here and say um, this object has the title and then I should just be able to go to right like this and do that and then put this comma here and now we've got that set up and then um, the we just say here um, and actually this won't even be titled this will be like a caption caption and this is actually gonna break the database so what I'll have to do is I'll have to um, re I'll drop it and redo it just because the fields are going to be um, they're going to conflict um, so we're going to change that to caption and the caption is going to be of type string and that's all we really need on that um, we'll probably need to, well no so now I can just go ahead and get rid of this and um, I think I, got, I don't need this either. So now that looks a lot cleaner. And now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this section. And now this section is going to be all of this stuff. So let's see where this ends. And we're just going to grab everything in between that. Because having those schemas in there was definitely not the way to go. Um and then instead of having like a type section we're just going to drop that in there like that and it's happy um sections so it should be an array um i think this is where it ends here yep and then um the sections should be a comma here I think let's see yep there we go and um, now that we have that I'm just gonna verify that with the way I did my user uh, no no I think it's post let me actually get rid of close the routers and then let's look at the I did it again with the models um, so now we're in here on the <coughs> excuse me so now um, there was, I think there's something with the Im oh I'm sorry so the images yeah it's the same way we did images and um, yep okay so we got that and um, date started date completed URL and that so it's missing a comma somewhere there it is you see overview is actually missing the comma because you got your description you got your image but there is no thing after that so let's go ahead and drop that down um, the comma actually goes here and there it is so now the overview object is fixed now sections go in and everything's happy. So sections, date started, date completed, um, URL, type. So we're good. There we go. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then we go to 
to post and I think post is good yeah post is good um what may happen later is that I may turn content into an array to just hold each um, paragraph and if I want to add multiple images into a post um, the reason why I haven't gotten to it yet is because I may be able to host this as HTML um, with the tiny MCE um, what's that um, API that I was that I've been looking at I haven't gotten a chance to work with it so I might do a demo project um, over the weekend just to see how that look well I'm yeah I, I might do it over the weekend to see how it looks so that way if I get to the point where I need it on the front end now um, I don't think I'll need it right away though so it'll be this weekend or next weekend so um that's all there and so this is all good so now um last thing I want to do is go through the routers and just look through them really quick to see if I just see any kind of clean up I want to do or anything to make it a little bit more verbose or stuff like that. Oh, this tea is really good. This is the Moroccan mint from Mimi. All right, so we've got our existing post. If we have existing posts, we throw our 409, which is the um, conflict response which would we want and I'm sorry I pulled my hand in earlier so I'm just trying to put some heat on it um let's see this looks good oh I didn't um what's the word I'm looking for I didn't um actually I don't need, need to do this um what I was trying to say was I didn't um, finalize how I wanted to error my error messages but actually I think I'm not even going to do any error any display of errors reason being is I might handle them on the front end and um, instead of um, having some kind of um, error message so say well not to say I'm not gonna have an error message but I think I might do pop-ups for myself to say hey the post already exists or something like that so I don't want to already do this I might I'll do it on the front end have some kind of um, config file or something like that and it'll just pull from the config file so I don't want to duplicate it so um, let me actually just pull these out and um, like that and then let me check the post uh, the project router for the same thing um, again we're just gonna pull these out because the error codes and are enough really um, in terms of you know if you're a developer you, you'll know what the error codes mean and here this actually never sent this will never send so good thing I caught that so you'll send your conflict message um, same thing here we're gonna whack this and same thing here we're gonna take this message out completely um, we're going to this out and we're going to take this out there we go so now it's clean we'll just see our error responses and um, that's really all we need though and then I'm just going to check the user router one more time and I believe where I was yesterday um, I left off at a pretty good spot if I'm not mistaken so um, the only kind of thing that's up in the air right now is kind of the sort options um, I haven't really dug into how I want to organize that and what the flexibility is there so um, I'm fine with having it the way it is because really um, when I think about it I the only thing these things should be sorted by right now is actually the timestamp because I just haven't had anything else going in here for instance when you look at the, the design and we look at the posts you're gonna see the most recent posts first so um, there's really no reason to actually 
change that right now. Um, and then if you actually go over to the posts kind of dashboard, it's the same thing here. And even in my design right now, I don't have a filter or a search button or anything like that. Excuse me. So um, I really just need my default stuff. I do need my limit and my skips for these things here, for these fits you here. But other than that, I think I'm good. So I don't even need the flexibility. So um, in sorting, so I can actually just take that off if I wanted to. Um, but I'll just leave it there because it just opens up the door for me later. Um, but the only thing I will do now is I'm going to sort it by um, the timestamp and I want to figure out what it's date created or date active. I'm going to do it by date active because that's going to be the one I need. Um, so I'll do that. And then I'll just retest these uh, and then go to post router and I'm going to do the same thing there. Uh, let me just make sure that it has the same write up date active project is going to say what date completed. Um, hmm. Now the real question is I want to have my date completed in there. So that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it in there. So, um, project. Oh, there's some mix up here. So, post is supposed to have the. Okay, so I'll just. Post. Cut. Paste. I don't know why I did this. Don't ask me why I did it that way. I just wanted to save it without. Um losing what I already had so I can just grab that cut that out and then drop this over on the post router on the sort so where is our sort um, get huh I didn't oh so I didn't do this over here yet so let's go ahead and start working with that so I thought I did that's interesting. Uh, maybe did I do that on users then? Yep. So um, that's fine here. I'll sort the users by name because that's all I, I have for user. Um, so let me just go ahead and copy this. Actually, no point in reinventing the wheel. And we're gonna just drop this in right up top. And um, And there we go. So now, oh, this is supposed to be posts. Yep, there we go. Posts. Oh. And this is going to be post dot find. Oh, still typo. So this is going to be post dot find. Um, and then we're going to continue the way we're doing it there dot find. And here we have our object and um, so far so good. We're not doing any searching. So we're going to say where we're skipping, where we're putting our limit and we're sorting by the date. So let me go back to the post model copy this date active and drop that in there and there it is so um dot skip dot limit dot sort and um do i need anything else i don't believe so so i need to also change this to say if not posts plural and have that 400 message go out um, with our patch, um, we're not changing anything that has like a pre um, or anything like that. So I don't think I have to use this because the authentication is going to go first and then um, it'll run this. Um, and we can make the direct operation because I don't have, yeah, we don't have anything going in the back end. So that's fine, at least to me now. And um, in. 
yeah so I think we're good so let's go ahead and save all this and um, let's go over to Postman and then actually let me before I go to Postman let me just start my server because I always go to Postman and then forget I started so we're gonna run dev so now we got that going and um, I'm going to Postman he's making me hot Alright, so Postman's running up, and I'm just going to open up the um, MongoDB database as well. I'm um, sorry, Robo3T. And just give that a second to get started. So now you see in Postman we have 20 requests. This is crazy. And um, now that everything's kind of good to go, oh, let me delete this while I'm thinking about it. How was that test when I created that the day when I was having a problem? So we're going to connect first, and then we're going to drop all our databases. Mm, wrong button. This is the. And we're, let's just go ahead and drop all of those. Say, drop. Drop. And drop. And we're just going to go, you know, relatively fast here to just get everything going. So, um, first thing I'm going to do is get all my stuff organized if I can. There we go. I want all my get requests up top. And um, there we go. Get a user. I might put this up first because I'll need a user first. And um, get all users, plural up there I'm gonna do our log out all which is actually a post request so I'll leave that there um, get all posts it goes a post cool um, create a post here we go create a project um, log out all I should definitely so log in um, create a user should probably be first um, log out first or not. Um, there we go. Uh, wait, what is? Oh, log in. Okay, I see. Log in, log out, log out all. Log out all. It should be a post. So why is that showing? It's good. Eh, I don't know. So uh, let me just save it, and that's probably why. Yep, that's it. And uh, now we have our updates. Data user. And then everything else is pretty good. Let's do delete user at the top. Delete many posts. Delete many projects. And now we're good. So let's go here first, right? Well, before anything, we have to create our user. So let's go here. Go to our body. And we have our first user that we're going to create. Um, and we're just going to check, make sure everything comes back fine. Um, there we go. We got a 201 users created. Let's go get a user. Unauthenticated. Uh oh. Um, how long does that thing last? Uh, oh, I see. So this uh, is saying unauthenticated, but I think it's saying that. Um, actually, let me do this. It, this is this bear token. So that's why that showed that way. But this user doesn't even exist. So let me go back to get users and see what happens here still unauthorized and let's move this down to bear token so we're unauthenticated still so now i want to spin up the database and see if anything freaky is going on here oh i know we created the user but we never logged in that user if you're following me here so now we created our user um we got to log in so when we go log in, uh, we need to put on the change, fix those credentials here. There we go. So now if we say get a user, um, that user doesn't exist. So let's get all users first. Um, there we go, 200. And we're just copy this ID and um, get this before this token expires. I'll change it later. Um, 404 not found. Wait, that user definitely exists. 
Um, let me try this again. It's supposed to be ID there. So get a user. All right, here we are. So it seems like we have a problem here. So let's go back into the code and check our user router. So let's close all these open fields. And now in our user router, where we have get user by ID, I don't think anything's changed. Mm. I see. We messed up our um, request there. So we said if there's a user, send a 404. Um, where really we should have put, if not a user, we should send that 404. So hopefully our token hasn't expired just yet. Nope, there we go. Um, so that's good. And um, let's create our, mm, what do we want to do next? Yeah, create a post. Well, let's, let's log out because I know our token's going to expire in a second. Um, send that off. Good, we're logged out. Um, so now we're going to log back in again. And um, there we go. So um, when we log in, and we also verify that our password and our tokens doesn't come back. So um, now we're going to create a, well, we don't create user work, so we're good. Uh, we're going to create a post. Um, this is act This might throw an error because I changed the way everything is set up. So let's just see. Yeah, so um, let me go and look at the structure of this now. So our post, um, post the user router, we're done testing user. Um, we're gonna go to the post model. And actually no, the post model should be straightforward. So oh, I see, I went to, okay. Status, am I missing something that's required? So title, category, cover image, not required, content, description, um, status, oh I see, that's the problem. So let's put this in as a draft and test that. Now we're good, we created a post. Now let's get a post. Uh, we need that ID. So let's go ahead and grab this post ID and go over to get a post and put this ID on there. Send that off and we're good to go. And then we're gonna get all posts and send that off and we're good. Um, so now we need to create a project and um, project is good. I think this is still fine um, because even though we changed it behind the scenes, I I think we're good. Yep, there we go. We get that. And um, now let's go ahead and get um, the ID off this thing. We're going to say get a project. And we're going to drop the ID on there. Get that. There we go. Um, get all projects. And uh, I'm not going to put anything on it. I'm just going to say, hey, get projects. Send that good um I, we can play around with the queries but i'm, I'm kind of confident them let's let's just do one for a second see limit um equals um uh, well it's only one so it's no point even doing that um so let's say sort by i think that's what it is sort by equals asc yep we're good there's only one post in here so we're not even going to know the difference um and then we're going to delete them let's go um let's log out first because i think the token's going to expire in a second um so we log out and um let's go log out all no we're unauthenticated so that's fine uh we're not create a user let's uh log in we logged in and now let's go to oh we forgot to update so let's do that first. And um, I want to further that, I want to fix this. Um, so we go to body now, name, test on me, that's fine. Um, oh, I had to change the ID for the user. Um, um, I 
happy to use her. Send that off, and there we go. And um, update a post. Uh, gotta get my posts. Grab that ID off of there. Go back to update a post. Put the ID on. And we're we're good there. Update a project. So let's go to get all projects. Grab the ID. And then update the project with the stuff that we already have in the body. Drop that in there. Send that. 200. We're good. Um, let's go and delete a post. Um, put the ID in there. I think that I did last was a post. Let's see. Oh, we didn't delete anything. Um, I think that was a project. So let's delete a project. Oh, I see. These are specific ones. Actually, I don't think this endpoint is valid anymore. Let's see, though. Yeah, I didn't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, I only have one delete route, so let me remove this, actually. Delete a post. This is delete. Delete. Delete many posts. Let's go in the body and see if this is the right ID. Yep, there we go. Oh, nope, nope projects and uh, we're going to change the ID here to just be in this one here send that off and there it is we deleted that so let's go to um, get all posts grab the ID here and delete that oh user there we go. Boom. There we go. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, log out. Um, actually, let's delete our user. And then I don't think we have to log out at that point because, you know, your user doesn't exist anymore. So um, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and grab that user and delete that user. I oh, think time down on me. Here we go and delete a user. And there we go. So now if we check the database, it should be clean. Yep, look at that. Nobody's there. Nothing's there. So we're good. All of our stuff works. So um kind of breeze through that. But as you can see, we have everything working the way we want. And we caught a few errors that we may have introduced unexpectedly. Um, we went through cleaning up our code. Um, next is um, adding the image upload because um, let's go into that. So um, this NPM, I forget what it was called. Um, I'm just going to say image upload. Um, let's say npm library for um, buffer image upload. And I believe, yep, Molter was the one I was looking at. But while we're at it, you know, what's this one? This one seems a lot more popular. Well, not popular, but more recent. This one has a, me a 1 million downloads. 980, um, 600, 9, 900, 600, 9,068,000 downloads. So, um, this one is used for uploading files. Um, it's written on top of something called Busy Boy. Um, it won't process any form, which is not multi part. So, um, and it has support for different languages, which is kind of cool. Um, and then here, um, it does some stuff here to the body of, I guess, the form itself. And that's how it sends the data. Um, and then we have some stuff here on the API. So actually, I've never used either one of these. So this is going to be something that we're um, going to learn together.
because I've never used this. So this one is pretty lightweight. Look at this, pack a size 27 ki kilobytes. This thing called GEMS is 3.7 uh, megabytes. So it's like a thousand times, I think I got that right. Yeah, a thousand times heavier. Great Mighty King Hunter. Yeah. Um, so 449 issues. This one has 107. Um, that's okay. And this one already works with ExpressJS. Um, this one works with something else. So you might have to read into that um how that works so um let me just see if it works with express and that this one has five dependencies multer has eight and two thousand something dependence um so yeah i mean this was published 10 months ago so it seems like it's 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 um last published two months ago so we, we can see um what what's working with this and who's working on it all that kind of stuff um can't think of anything else that i'm trying to do for this comparison i'm just gonna grab one more so this is express file um upload which um sounds eh, but look at this this doesn't really have that many doesn't a lot of people aren't using it so they're really not jumping to something that isn't being used um And this is what I mean. This is why I didn't um, jump into the email stuff because with email, I was like, hmm, I have no idea. At least with this, I kind of brushed up on what was happening with this a little bit before I started. So I'm vaguely familiar. But we'll just go ahead and use Multer. It just seems like the one that's more compatible with what we're using. And um, we're going to dive into this. Before we start using it, I have to actually read this stuff because I've never used it before. So it's a middle rare. Um, so we know we'll, we already know where we're going to host that. We know when we this is how we're going to install it. Um, adds a body object and a file or files object to the request object. Um, the body object contains the va um, the values of the text fields of the form. The form or files object contains the files upload via the form. Um, so I'm actually thinking of a few things. Um, I'm thinking since it's middleware, um, what's on my mind now is, hey, would this be compatible? Would, would I be able to do two middleware operations at the same time? For instance, how we have our how we have our um, auth in our code. We um, have auth right there. So I'm wondering if we can have our middleware go in between our code and it just be like how we have on our patch seems like we can have actually um, a few things you have your path and then we have um, handlers um, then anything can go there so I'm wondering if we can just if we can drop it in like how we did before or if we have to you know fix that up some kind of way um, and then here we have upload single so um, when we upload our files um, I want to know hey you can upload you can upload an array as you can see here when you just read it um, you, you you pick which um, extension you want to go to you have to make a post request um, and they tell you how to actually access it off of the request object so this is actually pretty straightforward pretty cool um, now this is something else that I don't know what this does but um, this is, um, so I think here, this is actually what they're telling us how to send our form. So this is some of the stuff that our form will have to, in uh, comp, this is, this is how our form will have to look. Um, and we'll talk about forms uh, a lot more when we get into Angular. Um, Request.files is an object, string or an array where file name is the key, and the um, value is array of files. Okay. Um, so, for instance, you have your avatar, it'd be zero, and the actual gallery will be the array. If, I'm, if I got that right, it's an object. So, it's an object with a stream property, I'm assuming, and um, 
and the value is an array of files okay so I guess this is saying hey you have a gallery of stuff um, I don't know um, this is uh, text only I guess so now when we look in here we still have field name so um, in this particular case we don't um, have a form just yet um, the original name so um, you have your encoding the type we want to use mime type so this is talking about different stuff that we're going to do in the file um, this is where we want it to be um, the destination where it exists and um, the name of the file that we're looking for in this destination um, the full path to upload the file um, so I guess this puts those two together and um, a buffer so they have some options some filters some limits so if you want to limit the size of the file that you can upload um, I really don't have any restrictions right now so I think I'm ready to just go ahead and just play around with this so in order to get this up and going we're gonna say um, npm install I think I copied it control shift V nope I didn't so I'm gonna go over and copy this this and then go down into um, VS code control shift V drop that in there save it and then we'll be able to get that set up so now I'm going to go back and run my server and um, we have Molter uh, Mol Molter I think it's how it's pronounced and um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make I'm going to give it its own route um, so to be uh, I guess it'll be image upload router upload dash router dot js um i don't know if it's gonna need my own thing but just wanted to separate it from the post and the projects just because those th those things are already um getting a little heavy um const um first things first we're gonna need um we don't have a model for this Ooh, i see i see how this is working um this one's tricky because um actually no it's not I'm gonna keep these in the post and the um, project routers because they're um, associated with those models so uh, I'm just gonna go down into the section with the posts um, this is the only post in here so let's go ahead and just drop down in here we'll see router dot post and then this one's gonna actually be slash posts slash upload and um, I'll leave it at that and then I'll just go ahead and do auth and we'll do async um, request response and just kick that off as usual um, we're not going to do anything just yet we're going to go back and read um, we do have to do this thing so we can actually just grab that as well so we're going to do const instead of bar though so this is how you get our um, and we're actually just grabbing a very specific thing actually I don't know what that is there um, I don't know why they did it that way but that's fine um, hmm. so um, it's the thing that had me confused is so I see okay I see that they did upload dot so that's how we're getting it that's actually um, got me a little tripped up here because I, I don't really understand the syntax there um, where's the documentation for this thing um, because that's what that's really what I'm getting this is kind of a summary of all the stuff but um, since I'm new to this I really want the documentation so I'm gonna start with the github page and um, go from there and you see that readme that's the file that we're going to create for ourselves too a little later um, but it seems like the readme is doing the same exact thing here I thought I just probably 
uh, I thought it would find a little bit more. Um, so here we go here. Um, here's an example of how Malter is used on an ATM HTML form. Okay, so then in your JavaScript file, you would add these lines to access both the file and the body. It is important that you use the name field value from the form in your upload function. This tells Molter which field on the request it should look for in the files. If these fields aren't the same in the HTML form and on your server, your upload will fail. So, um, oh, I see. We're telling it where to upload this stuff. So let's go over into um, here, and I'm going to create another file called images. Um, actually, let's call it a new, fo new folder. Um, I don't want it on routers. I want it at the top here. And this is going to call it images. Let's keep, let's still put it there, so I'm just going to pull it out. And now we have a folder for images. Um, and what that means is, um, and I can really make it be uploads, because um, that's what I have it there as uploads. And um, I'm actually going to go, I think it's dot dot slash uploads, because we're, we're here, dot dot slash takes you out, and then we do slash uploads. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, and then when we go back over here, we have that, and you do, you know, that's where they're posting it. So um, we have the destination specified, and now we need to also pull in Molter. So let's go ahead and do that. So we just const Molter equals require Molter. So um, we've got that, and. We only need one line there. Um, I'm initially just going to try to drop this in right after our um, right after our auth, just to see if it works. And then if it doesn't, I'll change it. I don't know, I'll, have to, I'll have to figure out a better way to do it. Um, let's see. Request dot file is the name of your file. Request dot body will hold the text fields. Um, so it seems like this is all we have to do actually. Um, if we want to upload a, um, a file, you just do upload single and you drop that file in. So, um, and then we can console log us. So that'll be great. Um, so let me go back to the mongoose documentation because now what I want to do is check to see if you can have m uh, multiple middleware, multiple middleware mongoose. Mm. pre save hooks and hmm. so don't know I don't care about this I just want to know if you can have two middleware um, things um, and it's, is it really a hook using, uh, it's express. There it is. That's what it is. Using multiple, uh, middleware express. If get slash, so that's it. I can also define a middleware and load it directly, such as like that. Yep. However, I can also chain at least one of these. Well, it's to run extra middleware, such as authentication. So I see they have the middleware defined up here. Um, it's not saying infinitely, but it does say that you can add. Yep, so I think we can do that. All right, that's all I needed to see. So let's go over back to the GitHub, and we're just going to put the, the file, and I guess we just put the name. So um, in there, I got to put an image to say. Um, what it was so let me drop an image up in there and uh, let's grab something from my download section and uh, don't worry my downloads are safe um well i like this blue stuff so i'm just copy this and then um go back to 
over here and I'm going to drop that in my uploads folder Green, if I can all right um, let's say oh I see let me reveal this in the file explorer and I can just drop it in there I don't know which screen is going to open up in though all right so now paste that image in there and there it is and now this actually just makes me want to rename this to something that's more fitting to images like how I had in the first place and um, that will require changing it here um, and I think wait um, that folder here is the destination uh, we'll find out in a second um, so let's go back to that and undo both of those actions actually <laughs> Um, we're going to take this file out, delete that thing, move the recycle bin, um, we have the images there, um, I can keep it like that for now, actually I do need to rename it, um, put it back to uploads, sorry about that, and um, now that we have that, we're going to, after we do authentication, we're going to add in that upload dot single returns a middleware process it's process is a single file all right so so far so good comma and um i have to get the what was this say field name stream what returns middleware the process is a single file associated with the given form field um I'm just going to put the file location for this. So this is going to be dot dot slash dot dot slash, I believe. Um, let's see. Let's see if this works. Um, and I'm actually going to just console log it. And I want to do this. Um, somewhere else I want to do this I want to handle this in um, postman so um, I think what I have to do is do all of that well it's middleware so actually um, this is actually what I was learning um, before everything started so um, as you can see oh no we dropped it right in there right as we did and um, called that avatar um, so destinations there okay so let's um, try it like that so I'll just pull in that I'll create another folder called images and go back to what I did um, so click here I want to move forward and this will be images and then we'll open this in the file explorer um, and then I'll drop my image there and then um, now I want to copy I want to I'm going to click rename and I'm just going to copy that and then um, I'm going to drop that name in here so I think I should be able to just do that um, let me just verify here um, it seems like the avatars is already there Nary data right here we would up smelter already takes when we deploy we would lose is so i think this user is already exists with now the OS. this function called buffer i do want to take advantage of a way all i need to do is um, a few sections of this file so i'm not going to save it to my database just yet um so i guess this is going to be trial and error here um so now only thing i'm going to do is just do console dot log and we're going to see what how that turns out so we're going to do request dot, um, what are they doing on the docs there? Request dot file, request dot body, so we can see what's going on. And we do request, oh, request dot body. And let's just see how this works. So we'll save. And then we'll go into Postman, and then we'll um, create our new route. So um, add a request, and then we'll call this um, upload a post 
image and we'll save it and um, the reason why I I'm, the reason the thing I'm thinking now is that um, the image is gonna have the same name here um, because when I looked over here um, oh, nope. never mind I think this is the name that the file is gonna end up having yeah that's the field name or is it file name the request object with the file containing information in. So um, I don't think I have to worry about the the names and stuff just yet because um, they I'm not putting it in my database at the at this moment. Um, so yep, here's my new request. It's going to be a post, and it's going to be um, that URL thing that we created, and we're going to do a slash, and it's posts slash upload. And um, now what I have to do is get it to get that um, bear token. Um, I think I re let me just create a user. Well, I'll, I'll, do, I'll create the user in a second. I don't want to. I don't want to time out while I'm trying to do this. And then um, what I believe we can do here is um, on the header, which is where this is going to come in at. Um, I'm actually not familiar with this process, so I'm actually going to jump back to my course and see how he got postman to send that file so uh, okay there it is so you see that there so I'm actually gonna change this and just say image for right now and I believe the reason being is that um, it has to match here so it's image and then for the value um, I believe we can change the way this thing works um, there's a way for you to get a file upload so let's go back here and how did he get that file upload thing in there? Oh, form data. There we go. So make this say, wait, am I on the header? I am on the header. So this is not where I'm trying to be. I need to be on the body. And form data. And the key is going to be image. And then the value here is, oh, change the type. There we go. So this is change the type there. There you go. You got a help kind of for it. And then we can select a file. And now I'm going to go into my downloads and grab that file from before. So this is the one we want to do. We'll put that thing in there. And we're just going to send it off and see what happens. Oh, yeah, we didn't log in. So um, create a user. And then log in. And then we'll go and try to do this again. Um, unexpected field. Um, so, yep, we're getting to that point here. I think the field doesn't match for some reason. Um, there can be a few things happening here, actually, and, um, not really sure exactly what's what. But, um, let's dig into it and, and see. And this is a Molter error, so I can actually just grab that and hit copy, and then um, seems like it has something to do with um, nope, I don't think it's that. I think what I did was when I did the destination, I didn't have that set up. I'm just going to go right to the point just before it gets there. Mm. So I'm not seeing anything on over here that would just show me um, anything about the file being um, the name. I was thinking that maybe this um, field here had to match with the folder, but that doesn't seem to be the case. And um, the image that I typed there should match the image keyword that I put over here and it appears to be so so with this uh, I'm just gonna google it uh, I think I'll probably learn more from it anyway and I'm just gonna put postman um, yep this is kinda what we're doing this is it make error or something 
Um, I think I have, I'm sorry, I'm mm -hmm. adjusting my heating pad. I think I have it on upside down. Ooh, that part's really hot. <laughs> Folded it over. So, oh, too far back. And here we go. So I'm gonna keep that as JSON, I guess. Um, and then let's go back over to the web and see. So here, this is the destination. This is what they're doing there. And when they created their post. Um, it seems like they used the type there to drop that in. Okay, cool. Um, oh wait, I'm sorry, that, that doesn't went over my head there. Um, this FS is something for file writing, I think. Um, but the only thing we can focus on is here. So they have this rec file there. Hmm, interesting. Because it doesn't tell me where exactly I'm having that issue either. Um, it just said unexpected field. So I'm thinking that um, more than anything, I haven't set my motor up to do anything just yet. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to take this out and just see what happens. Because I think everywhere else I've seen it. Um... No, the unexpected field is definitely this, and that is, so it's the, uh, I think the safest thing I can do is just hit that, just change it to the letter I, literally. And now we're unauthorized, because we timed out. So sign in again, and then go over to upload this image, and again, here we go. So... I gotta figure out what's going on here because when I look at this it seems like this is all we need uh, you set the destination you got your, your file and then that's it but um, down here I don't even see anything that has a um, oh here it is right here so I have to figure out how in this form we can change the name so of a wait, all I need to do Let's is make sure here. I am working in an async function. I'm currently not, but I can add async up front of the so almost all the deployment through. platforms require you to take your code and push it up to the repository on their servers. We saw so the file system when we deploy system so. are only going to be with our binary image belongs to the mm. database alongside of the user who the image belongs to. So is that the, the problem there? Is to the data it does access to the data. Go ahead and save this file. So let me try that. I'm going to go to um, on the post. I think that's what it is. It's saying, hey, you want to save it to something that doesn't exist. So on the post router, let's, uh, well, not the post router, let's go to the post model. And I think it's called cover image. Let's just grab this. And. Um, even though we're not putting on anything, I just want to see what happens here. Um, still not exactly sure how this thing works. And then let me save the changes we made. And then send it off. Long time usually means something bad. Oh, wait, what is this? Oh, there it is. So somehow it's able to just jump right in there on that post. And that this is actually pretty interesting. And you see that? So somehow it's able to hook directly into our posts. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's able to hook directly into our post um, model. just by being in this place here um, so what we'll do is now I'm gonna go back because I really don't know what's happening in here and figure out 
and then um, we're gonna change the type for the image to a buffer um, so we're gonna change this to say type is buffer and uh, save it and the reason being is because we're actually gonna store that in the database now um, and I believe the way we can do this is we can say actually I don't know which one's the body and what so this is the the name this is the, that's the field name this is the original name of the file this is the encoding that it's done on it and we can actually manipulate all of this stuff and this destination here is telling you where it's supposed to save the file um, this is the file name that it's giving it um, and this is where it's gonna live once it's done and this is the size of our file 53,785 bytes and then when we look at the body um, we just get a null array so now um, I'm actually gonna look at the course for a second because I don't know um, exactly Power how he's pulled it all first and it processed because we want the buffer data. This is an object which contains all of those properties or um, avatar fields. Dot user. Dot so I guess. Oh, so I see that buffer. I don't see a buffer on this thing. That's probably what that object is. Um, so let's just try this. So we say um, request. Uh, let's see how they did this. So in this case, um, I don't actually have access to the post that I want to do so um, what I think I have to do is I have to have the ID for the post here and then have a slash because we want to upload it based on the post so what we have to do is we'll hey have here and we'll put some ID so let's go ahead and create a post because I don't think there's any in the database we've got a user but no posts so let's go create a post um, and the way we'll do this is, um, wait, this right, right here. Um, so we just send this all to create a post, uh, center. And then, uh, create a post. And we've got that, created it. Oh, what the hell is this? Uh, that's interesting. Um, so I definitely don't remember, um, adding that in, in there. So, um, I guess the, the better thing to do would really be on the update to add the image for the post. Um, but it sounds like it really, when you create it, we should kind of have those go simultaneously. So let's do it that way. So it, we already see that we can do these simultaneously. So let's just grab this and put these on a simultaneous and put this on the same route that we created it on because that makes more sense. Um, so we put this on the route that we create this thing on and then um, we're already grabbing and we are and now we have access to the post. So this is two birds and one stone. Um, so then we're going to do um, request dot actually no we don't need to do that because you say post dot um, and I think this is um, cover image right what they were doing here was doing you know doing all this to get the user all, and then they're setting it each to, to that thing so this is what we're going to do we're going to say post cover image equals the request dot file and then with this file is that we're getting here is um I guess we can get the buffer type off of it. Yep, look at that. So this is all the things that we can get off of it. So you have a stream, you can create a stream. Um we can get the size, we can get the path um of the uploaded file. We can get the original name, the MIME type. So we can get all those stuff that was on it. Um and we can do the buffer on it. So that's what we want there. And that buffer is the same, uh, I guess the same that to convert it to a buffer type, um, or just the, the, the exact byte code, the exact buffer um, code, exact like byte code, I believe. Dot save, 
like we've done plenty of times and then before. that's how we'll do it now if Let's i do want to take it. advantage of a wait all i need to do is make sure i am working in an async function i'm currently and not but i can add async up front of the here. arrow function so i'm actually going to go ahead to and that. refresh so at this, this point Mulder is processing the data, and then passing um, it through delete to it because we have some data in here on the image, on the avatar and I don't know what that is. And I think this and is. And what I'd like to do from here is actually um, test our work and make sure it's working as expected. I'm just what I'm going this to do entry. is save this file and try to upload a new avatar. Over inside of Postman, I already have my upload avatar request, and I'm uploading the data so correctly, post. like we were doing earlier, and I'm already authenticated. Because and I've created this request, I'm going to pause task the video because it's still going. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to check. We're actually going to we're actually going to you know do stuff with this now. Um, I thought that this uploads folder would have had the information that we were looking for, and I actually don't even see anything created anywhere else in here. So uh, I'm not sure if um, I'm missing a point there. Uh, actually, I, I think it's because we never actually saved it. So um, let's see what would happen if we actually save it. Because uh, when you go here, um, you know, you, you got to save it. So we get past that, and it starts to show up in there. And that's where you see the binary code for it. Um, I'm not going to get into that just yet. So let's try this again. And um, I guess this time, it's, it's putting it right in there. Um, oh, I know what this was. We actually, it, so it created the binary code for it initially because that's what we told it to do. So now I'm kind of interested to see if I pull this off, let the um, image go through the body and see what happens. So we're unauthenticated, which is okay. I'm going to log in and then let's go try to upload this image. Oh, wait, I forgot. Um, wait, that was the one. So we get an error to say we cannot post. Um, oh, I see. We have too many. We have two commas there. There's slashes to say. Um, and hopefully, I got my async on that. Yeah, that should be fine. Um, post dot cover image equals request dot file dot buffer. Seems like we're we might have some problems going on um, down in the terminal, but I don't see any error messages. Oh, I remember. Um, this shouldn't even exist, actually. This should be on when we create our post. So let me actually delete this. And I never saved. So now when I go to create a post and um, we send this off, let's see what happens. So we got a bad request. So there was some kind of error going on. And the only thing I want to do is I want to just drop this error message on here. Because now I want to see what the error was. Um, hmm. So uh, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to go back to the course one more time. And I want to see how. If you wanted to, in this case, we can send back an empty body with the 200 status code so they know that things went well. Now, at this point, I would expect to see an avatar field on the user in the database. So, um, I'm, I'm thinking that when you do this kind of thing, uh, I think I have, did I have cover image required? Because if I don't have it, um, here it is. Yeah, it's not required. So I wonder what's happening there. Because we saw before when we um, created our post with something in there, we had it. So now I'm thinking that maybe I forgot to set something up to catch the the um, the setup. So let's go through this. So we have our post because that this is where we want to put it. So I'm not going to, I'm trying to, I'm going to try to stick with this. Um, I think what happened is that on, oh, I see. Um, we, we, what we did there, we did, we did raw. Um, and since we sent all of this stuff in here, it didn't work. 
So um, the first thing I'm going to do is do the form data thing again. Um, I'm going to add the file on here. And now I'm going to say cover image. And when I do the file, we have our file. But now I'm not too sure about how to add in the rest of our stuff. So I, I guess I'll just do it this way manually. Um, I wish I can copy this stuff and just paste it in multiple places. Uh, form data. Let's see if I can do a bulk edit. Keys and values are separated by that. All right, let me see if I can do this. Control A in here. Okay. So, um, I believe I can just do it like this. Each new line is uh, a new thing. So, this is a lot easier to do. I can just pass in all the data this way, I believe. Um, I think I will have to change how the request is sent now. And this is perfectly fine because in reality, we will be using a form anyway. Oop, drop that there, here, and we got, oh, we need to delete that, we want that. And um, in here, I'm gonna say cover image is gonna be, um, that's the only thing I'm gonna leave blank because now I wanna, if I, Trans I'll take this back to raw. I wonder if it picks up all the stuff that we have in it. Yep. Um, form data. And then now if I go to key value edit, there we go. So now I have the cover image already there. Um, so now I can take this one off actually. That's a duplicate. And um, what I think is going to happen now is um, I'm actually going to comment out everything. And um, the reason being is that I just want to see what happens. So um, I'm going to do console.log, and we're going to do request.body, and uh, we're going to do console.request.file. Um, reason being is because I want to see where the rest of the stuff is coming from, um, and I want to see how it's set up. So right now, if I send this, we're going to authorize. Fine, let's log in. And um, go back to trying to send off that image. I think it's create a post. So we're having, it's going to keep loading because we're not telling it to send anything. So, oh, perfect. So this is the body here. So we can just get it right off the body per usual. And um, it seems like everything should just run um, as before. So um, I'm just going to leave it like that and see what happens. Actually, um, we now have to create a new object because we're pulling off the, actually, no, we can just drop it in right there. Um, the only thing we have to do separately is getting that image in there. Um, I'm thinking this right here is overriding what we had in the body because when you look here, all of this stuff is fine, but then once you get the file, oh, wait, nope, the body doesn't even include it, so I think we're good. Okay, that's interesting. Um, oh yeah, because the file is a separate thing and it, it's already recognizing that when you send in the body. So the body is still fine and good to go. And um, I believe I can even just drop this right here on it. And then we can just save it in the end as you know before. Um, so now that timed out, let's go ahead and send that thing again. And oh, look at that. Look at that. Um, and does it have the, um, I don't see the, so it's sending all this stuff back except for the, um, cover image. So I wonder what happened with that. So let's go into our database now, um, refresh that and look at the object. 
Um, actually, I see date created. We got that status file category content description. What I don't see is the um. There's supposed to be eight fields on this thing, so let's. Let's go a bit deeper. Seems like it, it whacked it. Do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so now I'm kind of confused on my post router because um, we have this cover image on here that's supposed to be there. It's supposed to be a type buffer, but it's not showing here. Um, That's interesting. Uh, we look at uploads. We're not getting that either. So I wonder if that has something to play with it as well. Um, reason being, um, let me go all the way back, and you'll just see what in a second. What I'm gonna do right is, here, is to send anything back. We didn't send buffer. anything else Larry with that. Dot, do some um, but I just think it's kind of weird to send the file by itself. Um, you were using something like AWS. So the file system actually gets wiped every time that you deploy, which means that we would lose. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go actually jump up, um, look at this thing from a bigger scope, because I'm thinking that maybe there's another folder in here that I create. Yep. Look at that. When I so, I guess it's smart enough to know where our stuff is. So you see that folder was actually created outside of our, it wasn't created here like I thought it would be. So if I can actually delete this, get rid of it, and then I can go into back to the post router and uh, I'm just gonna change this to that. So it knows that this is taking it based off of the directory right here, the global scope. Um, Your storage is not set at desk. Multiple will create a disk storage instance configured to store files at desk with random file names if ignored. And uh, I think we can actually give it a file name and stuff like that too. Um, but I'm just trying to get it on to the database right now. So um, let's try this thing one more time. So we got it. all of the data that we wanted. And we have cover image here expressed explicitly. Um, so let's go here again. Uh, we're not logged in. So log in. And then we're going to um, go back to create that post and try it again. So now it's saying we have a conflict. And uh, we do have a conflict, but the problem is I don't see our... Um, our document in here. I don't see that byte image like we were supposed to see. So I'm just going ahead and delete that and then just try it again. Hmm. I'm almost thinking that me trying to add it on together is what's calling this no problem because it's saying oh hey the body is the object and then I literally trying to say on this new thing here I'm um what's the word I'm looking for I'm I'm not keeping up with it. So I'm actually gonna just try to do this. I'm gonna say um I'm actually not too sure on this because creating another endpoint and then saying um, you know using that specific user was fine um, I'm trying to think of, I'm just trying to think of a way I can jump onto this property that we want and set something because if we know that our post dot cover image right that should that should do it but it's not doing it here and um, let me actually just go here and jump right before you save it. We're going to throw it on there. And we did request.file.buffer.
let's save it and see where we can go here. Conflict again. Shouldn't be a conflict. So now I'm thinking we're not, we're just not getting it. But when we go here in console log, console dot log, um, oh wait, let me, let me see something else too. Um, what I'm thinking is that this file might, no, 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 that's not happening. Let's just go and console log that. Let's go console dot log. Um, I'm going to do two things. I want to see if the cover image actually came in. And we're just going to do post dot cover image. And then on top of that, I'm going to console log the request dot file dot buffer. Because now I want to see a buffer containing the entire file. Yes, I want to see that. And um, let's try that. So if I send this, I should be fine. Oh, I didn't mean to log out, but that's fine. Um, log in the user, log in, and then let's go ahead and create that post. I mean, yeah. So this is what we're getting. And let's look at the terminal now. So this stuff is undefined, and that's our problem. Um, cover image is now undefined. Why is that? Because when we went here, you get your request that file, but that buffer is now showing undefined. So I wonder why that is. Um, so I think um, it's the file type. So um, and I was, I was it's getting the file, but the file type for some reason is causing it, it a problem. So um, let's say uh, Molter Molter request dot file dot buffer undefined there we go so it's a oh okay so yep this is what we're trying to get So, oh, this is my respondent. Could you elaborate more on one of the fixes? That's correct. We've moved to using streams instead of having specific storage engines. To read it into memory, use eg get screen. Get stream. Oh, okay. There we go. That's why it didn't work. So, we're going to say equals um so now we can say await request dot file dot get stream let's try it again um request dot file dot stream thanks for me get stream works for me by not limiting file size and parameter that is fixed, even though yeah. okay, so that's one option there. So we can um, use get stream to um, create a stream and then just grab all of that. So um, let's see. Um, I just want to see what, what what the options are. So that's definitely a good one. We're gonna keep that open. Um. Oh wait, memory storage. What do you mean memory storage? Um. Oh, this is. Um. 
I wonder what they use to store it because I wonder if these were updated. Because if these aren't updated, so request that body will hold the text fields if there were any. Request that file is the file that we want. Um, and we can also upload multiple files, which is kind of cool. Because and then um, I'm sure there's some way we can pull it down to get the ones that we want. Um, request dot file is an object. Um, that's cool, but I want the actual um thing. So okay, memory storage is now no longer supported. That's why. That is exactly why. Um. So now that we we're not using the buff, so that's that's why I guess. Um, memory storage is no longer supported. So I wonder what the the way they they have that set now. I mean, they didn't even tell us that that thing is no longer set up. Um, so let's go and just make the modification we had with um, from the from the docs. So we were able to find it through the um, GitHub documentation here, and it's telling us we have to use uh, get stream. So let's go here and just grab get stream, and then look it up in the npm packages and see what it does. Oop, come on. Uh, and then here's another one here. Uh, I'm just going to put control F on the buffer. Yep, there it is. And this is what we're saying. So this this thing here was fine. Oh, uh, the file was undefined for some, for some reason as well. Um, so the multi explicitly states that include encrypt type multi fault form date in the form declaration. So, um, use the data property. Same issues. I found that single file does not create the request that file property. Buffer property does not exist. Use data property. So it seems like this thing was updated. Um, and, um, so I'm just going to go look at the, the docs here. Um, and I'm going onto the actual GitHub, um, directory itself because um, it seems like they have more information because even though they still have buffer on here they should say something about how um, it's not being supported anymore so what if I say data they're telling us to use something called data but I don't see it as a, a thing on here so let's go here to the doc um, this was updated three months ago so let's check this one so it seems like they updated the documentation to say oh this is another language jeez and this is Chinese it's probably Russian so I guess that didn't help um, let's go to the library and see what they have in there um, what's this? that's not what I'm looking for um, let's go storage, I guess. Memory JS. Okay, so I'm just gonna try it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with data, try to print that out, and um, see what happens. Um, so instead of this, I'm gonna just do dot and see what the what we have over here. This seems like the easiest way. Buffer, upload, yeah, I don't see anything with data on that. I don't see a dot data at all. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll continue with um, dot stream. And when you get the stream, um, that's like a file input output kind of thing. And there's a way we can work with it, but I think get stream is just going to make it really easy for us. So we don't have to do any extra work. Um, and now I'm going to go to the npm documents. What is this? Uh, uh, npm. And I want to go to the main thing. I'm just going to say git 
I think I copied and pasted it for history. So what does this do? And this has 28 million downloads. Jeez. Get a stream as a string, buffer, or an array. So this is what we want. Oh, look at this unicorn. That is beautiful. Somebody took their time with this. So this is all we need here. And then we're going to go back into our thing and we're just going to go ahead and drop that in there as well. So now we'll just go ahead and say, yo, go ahead and just get that stream. Um, I do want to see what that looks like. And um, I'm just going to um, request dot file dot data. And I'm just gonna put data question mark. So when I when it prints out, I'll know what that is. Data question mark. Um. So we know it's stream, and then we just have to say get um, stream. So this just saves us some code, really. Um. Did I npm install it? I don't think I did, so let me go ahead and do that. Um, go up here. Um, npm install get stream. Joy shift V. And if we want to, excuse me. So you just send the stream right here. When you do get stream, it just returns get the stream as a stream. This method returns a promise. Um, we want buffer though. Get stream dot buffer. Get the stream as a buffer. This is what we want here. So let's do get stream dot buffer. Get stream. Um, and do I have to do? I wonder what the, the difference is between I guess it's the encoding. Um, so we need to do get stream and I guess this part just moves out a little bit. Um, dot buffer. Get stream dot and let's just see what's on it. Prototype name turns the name of function length default whatever that means. Caller Call buffer ray reply max buffer error. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and grab that buffer on that, and then we'll just throw that in. So now this helps us get that buffer um, object that we want. Um, that buffer type. Yep, there we go. Uh, we're gonna await that, and um, now we can see what's going on. And we probably don't want to see that stream, but I'm just gonna do it anyway because I'm curious. Oh, CLS. Um, npm run dev and now let's go to postman and well first before we go to postman um, let's delete the post that's in here and um, delete it and then we go back to postman fire the thing off and we are unauthorized of course let's log in and then we create our post Oop. What done happened? Set bad request, but we got no input. Um, I'm almost certain it's probably one of these things, probably to an error. So I'm just gonna take this one off because we didn't await it or something. I don't know. Uh, so the bad request. Let's take off this in as well. I thought this is the problem now. So, I don't know what the problem is. If I do this, I wonder if we'll get anything. Huh, nothing. So, the only thing I can think of is try to see if we can get this thing out here so let's do console dot log and 
Let's see if we can at least see what this thing looks like. And I do think I have to wait that. That request still. Oh, um, I think I'm picking up. Nah, no, I'm not. <coughs> so this thing must be throwing an error. So let's just change it back to get stream. I think we're gonna get an error anyway because of we said this is gonna be a buffer, and that's not what happened. It's giving us a string. So, um, here we go. Get the stream as a buffer. It honors the max buffer option set above, but it refers to the byte length rather than the stream length. We really need it to be, um, a buffer. Okay, um, I think this is what's getting us our error, because if I pull this off, do we get any problem? And that'll tell us, you know, what part of our code is breaking our stuff. Yep, that's the part. So, um, actually, that's kind of good, because now we, we know we're at least getting, making some progress. Um, and I'm almost thinking that, so, why does buffer not... So let's dig into some more because it's telling us in this thing here, you can undefined. Um, memory storage is no longer a function, which I think is fine. Um, if we do the buffer is this, that's not even the same thing, but let's try it, I guess. So let's go just get stream like that. And um, I think we already did that. Get stream, that stream. That's what we did. I feel like before anything, that's going to give us that um, conflict message. So let's just get rid of this. And um, log in, and then we're going to try this again. And this is really kind of the extent of how things work. So we're definitely getting the bad request because of this um, get stream. So. With that being said, I will. I, I sometimes wonder if um, I just took this part off and just did console log on the whole thing. So let's just say um, buffer const buffer equals that. And then I just try to console log it down here. So console dot log as opposed to trying to drop it on. We can just try to look at it this way. Uh, instead of trying to add it directly to the beta database, um, we can just try to see if we can get it to print out, you know. Um, so, yeah, we're still getting that bad request. So, um, we're causing, we're, we, we have an error going on in here. And only available to the handle file callback um, for custom storage engines. So, I think this stream just isn't readable. Um, and if I try to do the buffer again, I think we're going to get a problem. But only one way to find out, right? Yeah, that's definitely a problem. So this buffer is, it, what I'm thinking is now, it's that the buffer, maybe it needs to, oh, maybe it needs to be a, um, let's see. If I just do request.file buffer. If I do dot buffer, what is what kind of 
things that I sent back. Um, because when I look at this at, at my course, this is literally the same thing they had, and I don't think I had to have a file size limitation on it. Um, it doesn't seem like it's required because we would see it. Um, so let's keep digging into this. Um, a team member found that one is, is vulnerability by not limiting file sizes and apparently that was fixed in two times. So I'm trying to figure out where the heck this, um, so this thing used a data property. I don't know if the data is a property on that thing. Um, let's see, so much is found there. The multi documentation explicitly states hmm. Oh, encrypt headers. Wait, what? Oh, wait. So I put this in the header. So maybe that was something I was missing. Let's try it. So go up to the header and put this in here. Um, and I think there's two things I should be going. I think um, when we look at the docs for Molter, um, let me see if I can go back to it. So actually, yeah, we were supposed to have this in there. So I guess that's probably another reason why it didn't work. Um, so if we put this actually in the request, I think that'll help. So um, let's do encrypt type multi-part form. Um, all right, I have that in there. Um, let's go over here and do multi-part form. over to postman drop that in there and um, let's just try this again and um, one second okay that's fixed um, see go over and fire that off up oh, unauthorized um, log in and then create our post oh shit Wait, I'm still not seeing a cover image there. Yeah, I'm still having a problem there. Console. Hot log. Request. Dot user. Or request dot file dot buffer. And um, I'm actually just going to pull this up because until I get this buffer thing work, working, I really don't care about everything else. So, I'll just drop this up here and um, we'll send it. So, here it's undefined. So, I wonder what happens if I do another dot on this thing. Um, dot data. I don't know. Somebody said try the data property. Uh, can't hurt. So I'll send that off. See if we can get it. It's also undefined. And it's kind of weird though. It's that I don't actually see a buffer thing on this. So if I go dot stream, what do we get here? Um, I didn't hit F11. So let's fire that off again. Stream is also undefined. So um, I'm also I'm almost thinking that I have to do some some more work here because all of these are returning undefined. And um, this is. Uh, Let's go up to the docs and see what's going on. 
Um, I think we already have the act. We already have this working. So the class object the body contains the values of the text fields of the form. The file or files object contains the files uploaded via the form. Um, so we have this in there. So this is no. This should no longer be the problem. Um, because we can always get to the file, right? So, so it's a file here. Um, if we run this, we can get it, right? So this isn't the problem. Um. This file name is pretty interesting. Um, it's able to get this information off of it, and it's storing the image. So um, I wonder if it's saying. Let me see something. Let's see if it's saying. Um, is Mongols. Mongols equals buffer store zero um, buff Mongols. Right, let's see. Let's see Mongols equal file db max file size buffer. Control F size sixteen megabytes the maximum dot in the sign can't be shown as a single dot and you can't use a sexual model layer. Um when we do the size it's mm, I believe this is in bytes. So this is kilo and this is this is three thousand three kilobytes, five point three megabytes. So that shouldn't be the max size there. Um, um, so the only thing I can think of is to try to. That buffer thing is just not working. We removed. We've moved to using strings instead of having specific storage engines. To read it into memory, use get string. But once we have our buffer, my question is that because that's not even working either. Um, so let's let's just go. Um, Walter test dot file dot stream undefined. And let's change the timeline so we can get more recent stuff. I want it past year. July. To add events to the updates, uh, let's try this one too. Um, but over here in the course, um, let's see the undefined command. The file system for the project authenticated. You're going to be creating a uploaded it right in this video. You're gonna. Um, nope, that was it that was uploaded this route in this video you're going to learn how to create a link between the image uploaded and the user who actually uploaded it so in it this video like you're going to learn how to customize the errors that get sent back when the file upload fails whether it's because the file is not mm. of oh the here we go here that is support for file uploads okay i thought i missed something file picture pains express and this so data of end here. upload file we can go ahead. Now, 
will allow any file so, to be uploaded um, to this. Seems like I'm having some some issues with this. So um, I'll dig into it some more, and then um, I'll update I'll update you guys over the weekend. Um, I don't know how long it's gonna take, so I don't wanna hold up too much time. So um, thanks for tuning in, guys, and um, I'll see you guys on Monday. Um, I'll have this resolved, and um, I'll, I'll start talking on uh, what we're gonna do next. Um, I'll dig into this email stuff, so I think um, I'll cover that on um, Monday as well and um, we'll come full circle and we'll tie the knot uh, put, tie the bow on um, doing our service side code either Monday or Tuesday and then on Wednesday and you know for the next few weeks after that um, we'll do more front end stuff and that's where you'll see all the visuals with making everything look good and appropriate so um, I'll see you guys next week have a good weekend and